Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Alice and today I'm going to be painting on playing cards. So I saw this idea on Pinterest and I thought it was really fun. The person that I had seen had it done like altered playing cards. So they were more scrapbooky and collage like. It was really, really cool. And I thought it would be fun to paint on some playing cards and show you guys. I enjoyed this so much that I actually think I'm going to do another set. So I'm going to, I guess, show you how I did this. So I had a really old set of playing cards lying around that was totally destroyed. So I started with one playing card and then decided I wanted to do a whole set. The first thing that I did was I took out my playing cards. I used some masking tape loops to stick them down to a board and I used gesso, a lot of layers of gesso. And I mean a lot of layers of gesso, probably too many layers of gesso. The reason that I did this was to create a surface for the acrylic paint to stick to. Gesso is an acrylic based white uh, kind of like medium surface medium to prep your paintings and it's a really good thing to do on these because it's going to get the surface a lot easier for you to paint. I put so many layers of gesso down because you could still see some of the like playing card come through and you could even see that like now you can see the diamonds um, coming through. But I figured that by the time that the painting was done it would probably be okay and I should stop putting on the layers of gesso. Once I had the layers of gesso on, I painted all six of the cards in some plain background colors. I'm using these acrylic gouache paints by Holbein, Holbein, Holbein. I am obsessed with these paints right now. I love them. I've been using them for almost everything because they're ac acrylic based gouache. They were perfect to use for these because they're acrylic based, which means they would stick really well. But because it's a acrylic gouache it has more of a satin matte finish than a glossy finish which I thought would look better on the playing cards. Once I had it done at the background colors and I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to draw and what I wanted to draw it on but I started with some background colors that were just kind of a nice color palette to me and then I started with the sketches. I ended up doing a whole kind of celestial space theme here, um, kind of like vibey. And I had an alien. I have these like three eyes floating in the air. I did a little moon design, a sun design, a shooting star and an alien spaceship. It was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed just doing something a little bit more simple and graphic and different than what I normally do. I did this on Twitch on live stream. So shout out to everyone that was there and helped me come up with some of these ideas, especially the shooting star um, they, and the alien um, were ideas from my Twitch stream. So thank you guys for helping me. Um, and then I just started painting. I used again the acrylic gouache and I started work on the little alien. I think he's so cute. Um, I put a little triangle behind him just to kind of like offset the shape, like set like not offset <laughs> make the shape of his face stand out a little bit more I didn't want to give him a nose so I just give him a cute little little mouth and I wanted to try to keep each card somewhat simple and so I tried to use a limited color palette for each card and I tried to keep the sets kind of cohesive so one of the things that I did was I used a lot of repeat colors so for this the blue that I'm using is the same blue as the picture of the eyes and then I also use a lot of this magenta throughout. The yellow is a similar color to the peachy orange color that I have in the bottom right, but just a little bit more yellow. And all of this basically will help tie all the little cards together. Um, this is a really fun thing to do because each little card was so small. It felt like I was doing lots of little individual pieces, but because I worked on all six at one time, it was like a little set. It was really fun. Um, if you have any playing cards lying around or you can just go to Goodwill or like the dollar store and get playing cards, you then have like, what, how many cards, how many, how many, how many cards are in a set? 50 something. Um, you have a lot of little cards canvases basically that you can paint on um, for a really affordable price and it's really cool because um, I painted on the fronts of the cards where the uh, like you know ace of hearts or whatever it was and so I left the backs um, the way they were instead of covering them so if you flip these over you can still see the back of the playing card which I think is pretty cool 
If you want the back of the playing card to be neater, then you might want to protect the back of your playing card with some masking tape. I didn't do this and the backs of my ma of my playing cards, like the edges definitely have paint smudges on them. That doesn't bother me, but I'm gonna do another set of these and I think I might try blocking off the background first, just so that the, um, not the background, but the backside, just so that it will stay a little bit neater and tidier. I did, <laughs> I apologize that you didn't get to see the process of the moon. Um, like I said, I was streaming during this and at one point I forgot to hit the record button again. Um, but I do have most of the things in here. So hopefully missing out on one card and the last of the eyes is okay. I wanted to add in some shiny detail because if you know me, I'm like obsessed with metallics and shiny things. So I decided to add these silver metallic stars and I decided to add those onto every card as another unifying element to the entire set. I started thinking of this whole thing as one set, one complete piece um, made up of six different pieces. And so that really contributed to me trying to make sure that the whole set was cohesive and they all tied together well. So as you can see, I used the yellow of the rays of the sun and I went ahead and put that in this star because I thought it looked so pretty with that like baby pale blue. I'm really into the combination right now of pastel colors and then really bright colors. I'm just, I don't know, I'm really experimenting with a lot of things and I'm having a really good time. One thing I kind of wanted to touch on in this video actually is kind of related to that. And it's this concept that I used to think that certain things were reserved for other people to draw. Like I drew cute girls and that was what I was supposed to draw, right? Like girls and illustrations, that was what I drew and other people drew cool vibey things and aliens and eyes and suns and spaceships and stuff like that. Other people drew landscapes, other people drew plants and I drew cute girls. Um, and that was a box and a limitation that I put on myself and I was resisting doing things that I thought would be fun or that I wanted to try and experiment with because I thought it was the territory of somebody else. And that's really silly because these kind of concepts, these kind of um, symbols and ideas are universal. They transcend so many different artists and it's okay to go out of your comfort zone um, and to try something new. Don't feel like you're encroaching into somebody else's territory um, just because you want to try a new style or try something different. I feel like there's this huge fear that a lot of us have when going out of our comfort zone that not only will we mess up potentially, but that it's not our place, that that's not what we do. And I don't know, like going out of my comfort zone has started to impact the regular art that I make. And I've started to enjoy combining a lot more different elements, a lot more unique and creative elements than I used to. And I feel like it's really started to inform and improve my artistic style because I can incorporate some of these things into my more like, I don't want to say final pieces, but like the pieces, you know, that take me a little bit longer, um, that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, and I don't know, it's, I just, I, I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to touch on it because during the last few weeks, I really have realized how many boxes I was putting on myself and how many restrictions I was putting on myself. And if there's one thing that I've learned throughout my time on YouTube, it's that if I'm experiencing something or feeling something, chances are somebody out there is also feeling the same way. And that's one of the reasons that I talk about my personal experiences on here so much is because I've had so many people that are like, oh my God, I thought I was the only one that felt this way, or I thought I was the only one that did this. And chances are, if you feel some type of way, somebody else probably has felt that way as well before. And the more that we talk about it, the more that we can work together to like find solutions and help each other. And I don't know, I just think it's it's good to share our personal experiences and the things that have helped change our art, helped improve our art, and the things that we've struggled with that maybe we don't talk about. Um, and yeah, that, that is something that I've struggled with is feeling like I'm leaving the territory that I'm allowed to be in. And um, I think those are restrictions that we put on ourselves that they're not actually real. They're just, they're just self-made. And I think that as artists, we, we put a lot of restrictions on ourselves that don't actually have any basis in reality. Um, and I found that challenging those restrictions and assumptions that I have created for myself over the years has been so 
beneficial and positive to my artistic process. I'm making more art now than I've ever made in my entire life. Like I am filling sketchbooks up so much faster. I am I'm creating because I want to, not because I have to. Um, I'm drawing multiple pieces a day. I've never created like this in my entire life. I have gone through phases, but nothing like this before. And the biggest difference has been changing my attitude towards my art, allowing myself to be less restrictive, allowing myself to leave the box that I created for myself um, and try new things and, and, and create things that make me happy and draw things that I like and experiment with different styles and then combine it with my old style. It's just been very freeing. I've had, I've had a, and I really encourage all of you to kind of take a look at the boxes or the restrictions that you place on yourself. Um, and how those could be affecting your art and do those boxes need to be there? Um, so yeah, that's my little, little, mm, inspirational talk, I guess, <laughs> because I can't talk about playing cards for like 13 minutes, but I am coming to the end of these playing cards as you can see. And Oh, I am so happy with how these little designs turned out for the spaceship. I kind of imagined it was like the love and peace spaceship. And it's like, bringing up peace and that's why it has little hearts on it shut up I don't know I thought it was like cute um but I love this whole set I think it was so so fun it was very freeing and non-stressful to paint on the playing cards the acrylic gouache worked really well but you could definitely use acrylic with this um you could use collage based mediums like I saw the first person do embellishments um but it's really fun you should all go try this honestly because it has a very low cost uh you know low low entry cost so yeah, uh, I hope that you liked this video. I hope that it gave you some ideas about painting on playing cards. And if any of you do paint on playing cards, please let me know. I would absolutely love to see what you've made. Um, this piece, by the way, is currently up for sale on my Patreon. My $10 and up tier patrons do get exclusive early access to purchase any originals and limited stock. Um, and then next week, the entire set will be up for sale on my Etsy, um, assuming none of my patrons choose to purchase it um and yeah so if you are interested keep an eye on my etsy and uh if you want it now definitely check out my patreon i do have a patreon um it's actually running smoothly this time for those of you that have joined my patreon before um i never talk about it so i'm gonna talk about it i have a three dollar tier a five dollar tier and a ten dollar tier the three dollar tier gets access to like the entire news feed a group chat there's a exclusive live stream and then the five dollar tier also gets digital downloads every month they got wallpapers of all of these this month and then the ten dollar tier um has that original exclusive access as well as a 10 percent code to etsy so yeah um that's it i'm done promoing now thank you so much for watching this video i love you guys i hope you enjoyed it and as always have a great rest of your day bye guys